JSON. We're finally talking about it. Yes. And I have fantastic news for you. If you recall that nugget a few nuggets ago, where we talked about programming 101, how we can look at data and programming, strings, integers, lists, dictionaries. If you recall that, you pretty much know JSON. You're at least halfway or if not three quarters of the way there of understanding how JSON works. Oh, let's get into it. So quick refresher, where does JSON come into play? Why do we care about it? Well, when we're interacting with our router, which our router has its API all exposed, it's exposed. So when we send a request to the router saying, get me some information, more specifically, I'm looking at the resource host name. Give me that information. When we ask the router for that information, guess what it kicks back? It kicks back our favorite data serialization language. <laughs> Mouthful, it's JSON. It's the universal language that a bunch of stuff can, can interact with. And it's important for us to know how to interpret it. So let's look at it. I'm gonna get me some host names. Send. And it kicks back this stuff down here. This, while it's a simple example, is JSON. And everything you're about to talk about is something we covered in the Programming 101 video. So let's get some JSON basics out of the way. First of all, JSON will begin and end with a curly brace. In fact, anything between these curly braces right here is considered a JSON object. Now, you might notice that a JSON object looks kind of like a dictionary. So anything between these two curly braces will be considered a JSON object. And the glorious news is that object pretty much equals dictionary. Many people will use those terms interchangeably when talking about JSON, so go ahead and do it. And when I say an object is equivalent to a dictionary, I mean it. So you may recall that when we create a dictionary, they are also between curly braces and they have a key value pair, just like a dictionary. You look up the definition for sesh, sesh being the key, and then you get the definition, which is a shortened version of session, which is the value. In our example, the key would be host name between quotes, and then the value after a colon would be the value, <laughs> router one or whatever. And then we close out with closing curly braces. Now there are some other JSON terms you we have to know, and the good news is you may already know them. They're just undercover. Remember lists in programming and specifically Python when we have data between two brackets. It's a list. And usually it'll be a collection of data, so multiple strings and multiple integers or numbers. In JSON, we call that an array, aka list. And I'll go ahead and put it up here for object, aka dictionary. Now again, people use these terms interchangeably. So if you accidentally call an array a list, don't be embarrassed. People do that. You're in good company. So you may recall that an example of a list would be a list of strings. So maybe a list of trainers at CBT Nuggets it might be Jeremy Chara. Close that string out, separate it with a comma, Keith Barker, comma, network Chuck. Close it out with a bracket. That's my list or sorry, that's my array. Now let's go to Postman, our wonderful tool that we use to interact with APIs just for testing. And let's pull some information from a router and see the JSON it spits out and we'll kind of analyze it. This time around, I'm gonna forget the host name. I'm gonna look at interfaces and I'll send my get API request to my interfaces resource and we should see some interfaces. And bleh, the router spits out some JSON. Actually, let's grab this whole thing, this whole JSON, and we'll slide it into Microsoft Visual Studio Code. I love using that. Okay, let's analyze the JSON. Let's pick out elements we just learned about. We saw there were objects or dictionaries. We saw there were arrays or lists. Let's see how those come together in a JSON output file from a Cisco router. First off, we can see that we have our opening curly brace. We're JSONing, good, good to go. And because our JSON object is very similar, if not identical to a dictionary, we have our first key value pair. The key will always be between quotations and will be followed by a colon and whatever follows after that will be the value. So in this case, we see we have our items as the key. Then after that, ooh, look what we have here. We have an open bracket. So we know open bracket or anything between brackets equals a beautiful, oh, I'm sorry, not list, array but kind of a list. And then we have something interesting. We have yet another curly brace. What does that mean? Well, we know that a curly brace means JSON object. That means that the value here is a list of JSON objects. So again, this started our list. And then within this list, we have our first JSON object between these curly braces. So this is the first object here. This whole thing right here 
is one JSON object. And we have a bunch of key value pairs. What kind of this? This is an interface. Uh, description, nothing. What's the name? Loopback4. Subnet mask. Here's the value. IP address, the key. The IP address, 4.4.4.4 is the value. And this is just one object in the list. Now let me get this stuff out of the way and we'll keep going. I want you to notice one thing though. Boo! Boo! Look at all these commas. What are those doing there? Well, just like dictionaries and JSON objects, every time you have a key value pair and there's one following, you'll need a comma until the very end. At the very end, the last key value pair, you don't need one. Notice we have one here. Then we have the last key value pair, but what? Nope, not there because we don't need one. In fact, if you put one there, JSON will get mad at you and he will not be your friend. So you want to make sure you do this. You'll just get, you'll get invalid JSON, but the friendships might be gone. I don't know. So obey the comma. So this is our first object here, which we can see that this is, this is an interface in all the details. Then we look at our next object because we have the closing curly brace signifying the end of a JSON object. And then we have our next JSON object, this whole thing right here, another JSON object. Again, because of the opening curly brace, the closing curly brace, and then all of our key value pairs. So we'll move on down. We have loopback five. We've got gigabit interface or gigabit ethernet one, loopback two, loopback three, which loopback three is our final object. And because it's our final object, notice the missing comma, perfect JSON. And then we have the end of our list. And then we have one more key value pair, kind, it's a collection of interfaces, and then we close it out. This is our big JSON object and we're done. Now I'm going to zoom this out so we can get a better look at this. Just a good overarching overview. And what's great about using tools like Visual Studio Code is they can automatically detect what kind of language you're using. It knows I'm using JSON and it gives me capabilities to kind of minimize sections of the code. So I can minimize all the JSON objects, all the values to the key items. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. Pew. Okay, cool. So you can see the big JSON object, <laughs> J the JSON file basically is just one object, right? This is the one object. And it really just has two key value pairs, items, the key and its value, and then kind and its value. It just so happens that the value for items is a list and then a list of JSON objects. So you can see that we can nest a ton of different stuff. So JSON files can get pretty like they can get confusing a little bit. But as long as you can follow the braces and follow the brackets, you can you can figure out what's what. That's really all it is. Just a bunch of brackets and braces, um, lists and dictionaries, arrays and objects. And you can pretty much interpret any amount of JSON that comes at you, especially in the Cisco world. You know, let's simplify this even further. Let's forget the data for a second and just look at how the objects and the, the arrays are nested in this particular example. So we know we started out with a curly brace, which is our object. And then we have our first key value pair. There's our key. And that first value actually turned out to be a list and not just any list. It turned out to be a list of objects or dictionaries, but I'll name it object here. So we had our list of objects, each object finishing off the comma, as long as there was another object following it. I apologize for my curly braces. They're not great. <laughs> I believe we had four, so I'll do four. And because the fourth one is our last object, I'm not going to use a comma and we'll close out the list. But we're not done yet because within this one object here, we have this key value pair, but we have one more key value pair after that. So we have to put a comma there because we have one more element coming after. We have another key. We have just a simple value, simple string value. And because this is the last key value pair in this object, no comma, and then I'll close this out with the final curly brace. Keep in mind that within each of these objects, we have a series of key value pairs just not shown here to keep things a bit simple. So within this one JSON file representing the interfaces on my router, we have one, two, three, four, five objects, one big object that contains four other objects. And then we just have the one list or array. But notice how everything's nested. Now this right here, you gotta be careful. This is the pretty version of JSON. You get all the beautiful white space right here, the indentation to kind of help you view things in an organized fashion, but that won't always be there because JSON doesn't care about that. All JSON cares about is the proper use of curly braces and, and, and brackets and commas. It can be a jumbled mess. Let me show you. I'll show you the same file and how you might end up seeing it when you're working on Python. So I'm here in Python and I open that same JSON file. I'm gonna go and print it. So I'll print my JSON file and here's what we'll see. 
<laughs> Look at that. That's how it's going to show up sometimes. That's kind of hard to read. That's kind of hard to interpret. It was that same pretty curly brace and bracket mesh we had before, just bleh together. Now there are tools within Python we can use to make it a bit prettier. One being a tool called Pretty Print. So I'll import Pretty Print, and then I'll Pretty Print my data. Much better, right? Look at that. Just how we like to see our JSON. Almost anyway. And that is my good buddy, Jason. I actually really do have a good friend named Jason. So every time I picture JSON, I picture my friend Jason who has a massive curly fro. <laughs> Jason, the curly fro. Jason, much like our dictionaries, opens with a curly brace and closes with a curly brace. We call those our objects in JSON. And JSON can have one object, multiple objects, objects within objects, which we call nesting. JSON can also have lists, which in JSON we call arrays. And they go between two brackets, and that's our collection of data, multiple strings, multiple integers or numbers, or even lists of JSON objects, more curly braces. And that is the love language of your computer. <laughs> <laughs> or programs or applications. It's what we're going to use to send configuration updates to our routers or our SDN controllers and also receive data when we want to find out information. It's how we interact with APIs. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.